I, uh, while the chairman is voting, I'm going to sit here. Uh, but it's my turn to ask questions. So I actually wanted to ask you, Mr. Casper, uh, you referenced the recent response I got from the commissioner of the IRS. And what actually prompted me to write this letter is similar to your experience, is that I have had a number of constituents come to me and um, some really troubling cases where they just were getting the runaround from the IRS that they couldn't actually get the fraudulent return so that they could then pursue uh, protecting themselves in the way that you did. And so I was glad, obviously, to hear that the commissioner is now they're going to change their policy. And I'm going to have some follow-up questions on how they intend to implement that going forward in the next panel. But what I wanted to ask you about was a couple of things. Um, first of all, you referenced a $50 fee. I, I didn't catch who did you have to pay the $50 to? to well, the tr check was to the U.S. Treasury, but it was um, IRS Form 4506, and uh, I mailed it to Missouri or somewhere in or Kansas City and, and paid um, $50. It was an IRS fee uh, to get that uh, photocopy. So you had to pay the $50 to get what you were able to get about your return? To get a photocopy of the return, which showed the account number, I had to pay the $50. Okay. The, and, and then also... Um, just how were you originally notified that you were a victim of identity theft? Uh, on February 6th, I got the email notice um, that my uh, attempt to file was rejected. So I got the rejection notice, and there was a code in there and an explanation that it was a duplicate tax identifier, mm. which just a little time on Google figured out that's identity theft, so that I needed to call the identity theft hotline. And when you called, how many different people did you deal with? At least four or five, and it was about one or two hours on hold uh, each time that I called. So. so four or five different people, and yeah. each time one or two hours on hold. That's correct. And so, did you have to retell your story each time to the, each new individual? I believe so. I believe so. I mean, like I said, they were very sympathetic, but they really couldn't do much for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, you obviously, um, you, you really were. Uh, used your own um, thought process in investigating your own case. I mean, you yeah, it was, did it was a really, really good job investigating your own case. So so far. It was really bothering me not knowing who had gotten this information. So. Right. And, and But did the IRS, uh, what, they wouldn't give any information about what they were actually doing to pursue the case? Correct. Other than that, it seemed very unlikely they were investigating it on the Did own. they tell you even that they had reported it to law enforcement? Uh, no, they they never told me they had reported it to law enforcement or even to the bank. Uh, when I when I contacted the bank, the bank specifically said um, six weeks later the IRS never contacted us about this deposit. And and uh, obviously then they said that they didn't tell you give give you any follow up of whether there was any kind of um, investigation Good. conducted or any outcome. Well, of I it. no, I got um, a, a letter saying they had received my fraud affidavit which was the one I got the same day the police were um, interviewing the person. And then at the end, after the bank had reported it to the IRS and then uh, the case was resolved, they sent the day after I got the check, I got a letter saying your identity theft case has been confirmed the day after I got the check. After you got the check? Yes. yes. Okay. And one of the things that, you know, as I... He listen to what you have to say. This is something I've been hearing time and time and again. And obviously, I think why we're having this hearing and how important it is that we uh, get to the bottom of not only preventing uh, these types of thefts, but also a better response to them uh, from the IRS. And what I wanted to follow up with uh, Dr. Fu and, uh, and uh, Mr. Green is on the issue of... Um, you mentioned, Dr. Dr. Fu, one potential uh, third-party fraud prevention tool based on voice analysis, as I understand it. What other fraud prevention tools exist in the private sector could the IRS harness potentially to help us address this? And was this something you think that we should be pursuing as we talk to the IRS about this issue? Uh, because it seems to me that there's already a lot being done in the private sector that could be transported to the government sector as we look at this growing challenge. 
Well, uh, I think w one of the challenges for the federal government is that, y you, especially the IRS, you cannot deny any particular customer. So you'll have a very diverse customer base compared perhaps to the typical private sector enterprises. Um, now, there, there are a number of uh, fraud detection systems out there. Um, the, the, um, I think, uh, but it'd be difficult to, I, I think, it, I'm always wary of uh, suggesting to legislate technological solutions, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it would be worth at least uh, conducting studies to understand if some of these approaches might work at all, a pilot program, for instance. Uh, NIST in particular has quite a bit of expertise in carrying out pilot programs um, and making uh, strategic recommendations on, on authentication in particular. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, the IRS commissioner uh, this morning when he spoke uh, recognized that prior security measures become obsolete pretty quickly, and, and it is the proverbial race. You're constantly needing to improve uh, going beyond. KBA may have worked well in the past. Going beyond that in the future to, to step it up. There are ways you can add the other factors. You can add the type of data analytics that Mr. Casper talked about. Um, putting some of that in place can help you detect it a little sooner. Looking for patterns with certain emails, if they're very similar, if there are, if an email is a string of letters or numbers and you keep seeing incremental increases and you see a pattern like that, those are the types of tools that, that are, you can put in place monitoring on the back end. Um, I thank you all. We're uh, at the tail end of a vote here, so I'm going to adjourn this and I believe Chairman Johnson will be back, but uh, we'll be right back in the committee and you can take a... We'll take a recess, not adjournment, sorry. Okay. Um, thank you.